Welcome back to Limbus Company Daily Mirror Dungeon. Uh, this video has been recorded like a week in advance because I'm going to be gone for a couple of days. So, uh, quick note, I don't have the new IDs or anything in this video because it was re recorded before the update. But uh, with that out of the way, basic gist of what we're doing today, Lantern Dawn solo. I like Lantern Dawn. I think I sold with her like when she first came out and I don't really think I've touched her much at all since then. Let's change that. We can get an immediate gray coat. That's really good, actually. I think, can we handle this floor? Probably. We resist pierce. And that's mostly what these guys are, right? We're weak to blunt. I think this works. In case you uh, are wondering why you'd ever go to unloving in a solo, it's because uh, it's just really good it's like it's not it's not bad people will like think you might think that it's bad but you just gotta stall for a couple of turns of also my loading screen is in fact uh from the earl king fight because i felt like doing it earlier today i guess that's your way of knowing like what where this falls in between of episodes where this pre-recording falls in between because this is immediately after the last one that had a different loading screen right Something like that. This should work well. So yeah, we're gonna get into Bobby Yaga and we're just gonna stall for a phase a little bit. We'll mute the game audio, of course, because that's what we need to do, but that should be fine. And we get Grey Coat from this, which means we get even more healing from our skill 3. Hopefully we can get more skill 3s, hopefully we can get something else for healing. But this is a pretty easy floor one, so it should be nice. And we get two events. Obviously, we really want, like, Lethograph, because Lethograph is 10% healing every time we get a stagger, which, as you can imagine, is pretty good. Um, something like Thunder Branch would be really nice for us, because Thunder Branch would just make our Rupture even stupider. Uh, same for anything good for Rupture, really. Thunder Branch, Sand Dude Battery, Thrill. All really good stuff for us. Later Dawn is just a really solid tank, all things considered. Her healing is really good. And she does have an ego that she can use thanks to a lifetime stew, right? And she can get lust resources. Not every uh, sinner can say that they've got an ego they can fully fuel themselves with their ID or use they're using, right? Not every ID can do that. It's a weird one in this case, but it's something. Could be nice if we end up going to like I, we're gonna avoid also like an end corp floor of course But if we do go there, we do have a blunt mass attack. We can spam. So that's fairly convenient if need be Yeah, we get our events now Uh, Sure, that's pretty nothing What about here? Oh, this is more damage I guess and we also heal up here Not that we needed it. That's fine. And, of course, we're getting Fluorescent Lamp to plus plus, because that's a stupid amount of damage up in haste. What happens if we upgrade this more? I don't really want to try it. Moon Gunpowder <clears throat> gives us a little bit of haste and gives us more damage dealt when we are high speed. I don't know if I've ever brought it to plus plus before. I guess that's something I might do later on if I've got a lot of costs to spare, but I'd rather wait on that. Oh yeah, I gotta mute the game audio. I'm just muting the game audio entirely for this, because, uh, probably more convenient. Anything scary? I guess the, those ones are the ones we want to clash against. Yeah, cool. But yeah, we'll make sure if there's only one left, something we're just going to defend until we get to three skill slots. That's the basic idea. It's going to be a little weird for this minute, because, you know, there's no audio going through, but, uh... It's just because the music is copyrighted for specifically the first phase. Yeah, a lot of speed. And we also get aggro, so our passive is active now, so now we're going to heal up even more. Not that we really needed more healing. But yeah, clash that. We'll clash that, sure. Works pretty well for us. That one's almost staggered, too, so we might be able to just take them down. <laughs> We'll try it, right? Might as well. And once again, all the enemies are ruptured, so we get uh, we get stupid benefits from fluorescent lamp. I love fluorescent lamp so much. 
it's just really nice, right? Just getting so much damage up, so much haste, especially when you upgrade it, especially in solo runs, but doesn't necessarily like, need solo runs or anything. Okay, that one's dead. And that one's dead. So there's only one left, so... Uh, oh, you died to Voodoo Doll. Oh, huh. Well, that's fine. We're at five skill slots, and that's good enough. A lot of skill ones, that's okay. We just do something like, oh yeah, we actually need to pay attention which ones we're clashing against, don't we? That should be, I kind of want to clash that. What's fine to this beak pick, probably, that's the one we ignore, I think. Let's remember. Yeah, next turn we'll be at six skill slots, we're going to be set. We're healing up so much from everything, but these guys... These guys aren't even going to get a hit on us, right? Some of them, like, the later phases will, because there is a point where they've got more skill slots than we do, but it's not a big deal. You may resist Pierce, but it's not that big of a deal. This fight's not too bad. If I actually lose to Baba Yaga, I'll, I don't know, eat a sock. That's a normal thing people say, right? I think so. Okay, and we can just double up each of these guys. We probably only need to... Yeah, we actually don't need to do anything beyond just skill ones, I think. Full gluttony resonance, why not? We do get the... I think I've got 7 Yi Song as support passive, right? So that's clash power when we get like a 4 gl gl gluttony resonance. Which is happening there, so that's cool. We weren't clashing, so it didn't actually matter. So funny how you ran left there. I don't think I don't think that's right. She's doing her best. Uh, let's see. Once again, to figure out the attacks. We're fine ignoring. Like this one, we ignore that entirely. No need to worry about it, like at all. Do that. And we also probably ignore. I might actually just ignore that one entirely. And I like to clash a little bit. We'll just ignore like one of these randomly. Sure. Pull that out. They're gonna be taking a lot of damage. We're actually gonna stagger a lot of them with uh Voodoo Doll again, aren't we? I guess we're gonna hit some of these again, but... Voodoo Doll, we're kind of doing perfect damage at a single skill, too, is bringing these guys, like, within, like, 3 HP of staggering, so Voodoo Doll is actually staggering, which is funny. God. Yeah, we're doing pretty well here. Baba Yaga floor is just... It's very convenient in solos. To a degree that you might not expect, but it, I mean, it makes enough sense. And there we go, we get, you know, our bunch of haste and damage up once again. We can really just hit these guys a bunch, and that's probably going to be good enough. Sure, send it. They might all die here. I didn't pay the most attention to what I was doing, but, like, they might all die, right? We'll see. Chaika, Chaika. I still don't know exactly what she's saying, but it's funny to repeat, so... Good enough, yep. Final phase time. For these guys, not too big of an issue. Yeah, like, we ignore that one and, like, one of the other random ones. Like, uh, like this beast. Beast smash, sure. Looks good enough. And we do something like this, and that should work. A little bit of lust resonance for the funny. It's unfortunate whenever we do clear one of these waves, because none of the enemies have rupture for a turn. Uh, which is unfortunate, because it means we don't get the maximum benefits for fluorescent lamp for a turn, which is sad. It's not the biggest deal whatsoever. We still gain some benefits, even if there are no enemies with rupture. But when there is enemies with rupture, we gain even more benefits. It's not even the biggest deal whatsoever. I just love fluorescent lamp. It's another one of those EO gifts that just is super good for versatility, just for damage buffs and haste and just basically any team. 
which is always appreciated. Yeah, I think, like, I don't think we staggered, we staggered one person there, I think, was it? But either way, several of those guys are getting staggered, <laughs> thanks to, <laughs> yeah, they're all staggered now. Pretty cool. Yeah, we can just do something like this. And I think they're just all dead. And only a 10 turn Baba Yaga. You know, that would be enough to EX it if it was a fight that you had to EX with normal condition. Which it obviously isn't because it's in a dungeon and that's not how dungeon fights work, but... You get the gist. Cool. And off Dawn goes. Easily clearing that entire floor of, you know, frozen people. Shh. Without worrying the world. And we get Grey Coat for more healing. Because, you know, who doesn't love more healing? I'll gamble. Temporal Bridal. Alright. We don't have any Blunt. So that's not really much of anything worse. Do we want to go for resources? Homeward could be nice. Faith and Erosion is death. Hmm. Like, these two floors obvious no's. Outcast should be fine. Some blunt enemies and stuff. The bosses aren't too bad. We can get Homer. We could get Ebony Brooch, I guess. Which isn't the worst idea, actually. You know what? Let's go for it. I don't think we'll need Homeward. We've got so much healing in Lantern. Even without having Grey Coat, Lantern Dawn heals so much. Just naturally. But it'll be funny. What are we thinking? Resources are probably worthwhile. Yeah. First aid kit, I don't think we'd need. Pendant actually does do decently for us, so I'll take it. I'd like a Dawn skill change. I'll sell Temporal Bridal since it physically does nothing for us, and then I can get another reroll or two. Anything else I feel like... You know, if Voodoo Doll's been nice for us, I'm selling it, though, for just another refresh. Please, no dice. Okay, that's fine. It was only a 1 in 12 chance each re-roll. We'll see her in at least one shot almost guaranteed, right? So even if that's not the one, we'll get more skill threes in time. And you guys aren't too bad at all, so that's fine. There are definitely times where it would be better to be worse on speed. But there's also times where it's better to be high on speed, and that's more likely the case. Because if you're low on speed, we could have used that skill 3 after getting hit and healed up all the damage taken. But if we're consistently high on speed every turn, pretty much, and yeah, we are. Um, <clears throat> also, any Brooch is going to be really nice for us, because it's going to mean that, like, everything we have is Rupture, like, positive anyways, because Lantern Dawn is stupid for Rupture. But if we can get, uh, Ebony Brooch... Then that means all enemies will start with rupture. We get to guarantee getting the benefits from the uh, the fluorescent lamp to the max, basically always, because enemies will never run out of rupture, even if we do hit them. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Lantern Dawn is so stupid. Honestly, I think you could definitely debate that Lantern Dawn is probably the stupidest, like, status effect folks ID for anything. Just simply because, like, why is she rupture count on ev positive on everything, pretty much? Like, she's basically- you don't need to think at all when using her for rupture, she's just always gonna be beneficial. <clears throat> Which is so, so funny. I don't think she's, like, actually the most busted for, you know, status effects, simply because, uh... There's other really stupid IDs out there, right? But you know what I mean. She's just... far too good at what she does. The point of being kind of surprising, honestly. Okay. I mean, we'll take this. We can spam more skill 1s with Dawn. Sure. I guess we could also use Egos more. Sure. It's not going to help us that much. I remember point in solos is kind of a bad idea if you, we don't have like an actual like, decent spammable AoE, I guess. I guess we do, right? Because we've got soup or stew, lifetime stew. Um... But at the same time, it's weird, right? 
Nice. Pendant isn't actually doing anything for our poise simply because we can't man it, maintain it at all. If we can get Clover, that could be nice for maintaining poise. It's gonna run up fast enough anyways because it is a solo run. By the time we've got three or four skill slots, there's basically nothing in the game that can maintain poise count unless it's an ID that actually has poise count gained from skills. Because every Eo gift that's good for poise is usually capped at like a couple times per turn, right? Something like, you know, the... Uh, like Clover being capped at once per turn, right? And Clover gets more benefits for Gluttony, which is cool, since we've got a lot of Gluttony, but not the biggest deal. Since it's still not enough to make up for having so many skill slots. We do have Gloom skills, though, so Pendant's still something. We could always get, like, Horseshoe to be, like, one poise each turn. I guess we could upgrade it for it to be a little more, but... Right, you know what I mean. And we're going for the Elite Encounter. Is that counter again? I've seen counter so much lately. I'm not sure how much of this has actually been in the episodes, because I also did have done a fair bit of grinding recently, simply because I felt the urge to, like, complete the Yuga uh, Compendium. But I feel like I've seen Calendar, like, so often as of late. Which is fine, it's not a hard fight whatsoever. It's kind of long, it's kind of repetitive. It's, you know, a four-phase fight. You can theoretically skip third phase directly, or you can theoretically skip fourth phase, go straight from third to kill, but... Uh, I mean, it's all, it's fairly easy to do that. I'm not gonna say... I'm not trying to say that it's hard to do that. More so, it's not really necessary, because by the time it reaches phase four, it's dead anyways. Anyways, calendar shouldn't be too bad for us. We can stall for a little bit if need be, right? I guess we'll have to stall a little bit, just because of how it works. We'll need to kill all the, the actual clay dolls, which takes a few turns if we only have one skill slot to start out with, right? These guys are getting a little bit of rupture onto us. I think, is it... Is it the head manager that inflicts just a bunch of rupture count with one of his attacks? I assume so. Oh, you're going for your weird mass attack thingy. I don't know, head manager's super weird. I don't know, mind waves the mass attack thingy, yeah. Do you have- yeah, this, it's this one. It's like five rupture count next turn. Certainly interesting. Especially given how our idea of this guy, uh, doesn't have any rupture whatsoever. Instead has like some random singing potency on skill three, but that's it for status effects. I like G Corvotus. One of those units that, you know, helped me a lot when I was going through Ganto 3 originally. Still find anything back to those times. It's been so long. So, so long. But that's fine. On to... I mean, I'll take Midwinter Nightmare. Don't mind if I do. More sinking. Waiter, more sinking, please. Oh! And here's Thunder Branch. That is really good for us. Now our rupture is basically set. We just need standard duty battery to be able to get more potency going faster. But because now we're basically set on count for pretty much everything. Because you know, already skill one already positive. Skill three already like neutral. Now it is positive. Um, and then skill two used to be potentially neutral, but often like enough to get rid of rupture but now it is positive or it's neutral i guess you know what i mean though so yeah we're looking pretty good uh, anything any of you guys going for anything scary not really we're gonna take some bleed count i guess if these guys get a bunch of heads that's fine <laughs> i can't say i'm that scared especially if we just stop them from doing anything with potency I don't even know if they do anything with potency. Yeah. Shh. Some of these guys are going for the claw instead of the lunge, but Shuan is scarier. I guess, yeah, claw's two coins, so it's probably more damage. Alright, fine with me. Clash of those ones. We're getting a bunch of skill slots because it's just going to take us a few turns to deal with these guys. And we could stall if we wanted to. Um, I guess Flashing Lure is going first. 
If this does too much damage, we might instantly clear this phase immediately. They resist lust, though, yeah. But, um, Scarlet Moth means that we basically do half that damage to random enemies next turn. Or the start of the next turn, so... Yeah, not enough to kill. Fine, then. We'll try seeing if we can kill these guys here, though. I'm perfectly fine getting... I don't really think I need to stall to get enough skill slots for this one. It's really not that bad. We can pretty easily avoid... Just ignore most of the clay dolls in phase, in phase 2. And we'll see it in phase 3, depending on how I'm feeling, right? Won't be able to do too much damage, maybe. Potentially. I guess we'll see. It's... Who knows what it is. Hit both of these with a flashing lure. Do decently. You with another flashing lure for fun. And we're gonna get hit by a couple things here, but not that much, really. That arm's done for... We got a tail on the first coin for that one, so that arm is still done for thanks to the skill one, though, so that's cool. Commemorative coin triggered. And we're getting more bleed count. Aw, oh, man, what a, what, a, what a real shame. But now the clay dolls are going to get ignited, so they're going into burn mode. Um, you do resist pierce now, so that's rude. Everyone am I scared of? Belch Fire I kind of want to clash with, but everything else I don't think I care about, so yeah. This'll work. Clash out with our skill 1, trigger the commemorative coin to hit one of these guys for a little bit more damage. Cool. Yeah, look at that rupture. <laughs> we love being rupture neutral slash positive on literally everything. We really do just need sanity battery. Oh, I should have... I should have tried rolling for health chicken floor. I didn't think about that. That could have been really funny. We don't We don't actually need the rupture count, though. It would have only mattered for the sake of uh, thrill, I guess. I'll take a random one. I could gamble on a rupture you gift, but I don't really need a rupture you gift that much at the moment. Uh, what do I want here? Eh. Roll for something funny, potentially. We could just... What floor am I fine with? I don't think I want to go to Blunt Floor because we're weak to Blunt. This is Blunt Weak Floor, which might be fine. Gloom Floor? Is Gloom Floor fine? I'm still not fully aware of what like all like the random guys are on each floor, so I can get caught up by that sometimes. This floor hand has standard duty battery, though, so I'm just going to go here. And assume that it'll probably be fine, I guess, right? Probably. We got our rest stop. Uh... Thunder Branch plus plus is funny, but also not the biggest deal. I kind of want to get this to plus plus. Yeah, that's even more haste shenanigans. Cool. More poise. And we can't upgrade that again, but that's fine. Pen Nostalgia upgrade again doesn't do anything for us. Yeah. That's good enough then. We could heal, but we don't need to. We could fuse. We could fuse, actually. We could try it. We've got some garbage. It's like if we were to, like... Potentially a standard duty battery. Cool. I'll take it. It's pretty beneficial to have, of course. Alright. But yeah, we've got stupid rupture now, so let's see how well that works. Um, I forget what bosses are on this floor. Because what is it? What did I choose? Was it Gloom Week, I assume? Yeah, it would be Gloom Week. Uh. Gloom Sloth Slash? Which one's that? Is it Skin Profit? I don't remember. Oh well. Because it was Gloom- no, it wasn't Gloom Week, is it actually- is it Gloom Users? How do I not remember what floor I went to? No, it surely had to be Gloom Week. Probably. I don't know, we'll see what boss it is when I get there. My mind's kind of drawn a blink. It's been like... I took like a half an hour break there, so much. I do not remember. That is 17 speed. Yeah, combination for us with lamp and, you know, smoking gunpowder. We're getting a little bit of haste. Top of the fact that was a max speed roll in the first place, even before factoring in the haste. 
Yeah, uh, if we can get more stuff that just synergizes with having stupid amounts of speed, that could work out, I guess. Something to keep in mind, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, these guys do very pitiful amounts of damage. Since we only worry about Blunt, like, it's kind of... Well, these guys are just obviously very pathetic to us. They do resist Pierce, though, so... Little unfortunate, but not the biggest deal. We've got Rupture on our side, after all. And sometimes that's all you need. Cool, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, so still two left. We can kill them both this turn without very much hassle. Cool. Skill ones are, you know, not doing a lot for us, but I mean, at least we get to use skill ones twice. Yeah. Cool. Easy fight. I mean, it's Kanto. It's a Kanto one enemy. It should be an easy fight. God. I'm still trying to think. What is... Is it Skin Profit? Like... I don't... No. We'll see. I'm drawing a blank. I really need to just, like, remember some of these, because most of the time it's fairly obvious what each thing is based off of weakness, but sometimes your mind just kind of draws blanks, right? This is one of those times. Isn't it painkiller? Uh, cool. If we get staggered, we'll maybe not die. Okay, we resist Pierce, so this isn't too bad. For a second, I was like, oh, that's kind of scary. We are weak to Wrath. So the, that attack is pretty scary. That's actually not a bad idea for resistances. Am I worried about taking too much damage here? I don't... You know what? Let's just play it safe. I haven't egoed it all yet. I think that's fine. It'll be beneficial. We'll do some decent damage, that sort of thing. Our resistances look much better now. Because now we've got a better lust resistance. 0.5 instead of 0.75 or whatever it was. And one to Wrath instead of two. So yeah, just, it's a good thing to keep in mind. We do do it again. Our Sandy's not looking great now. That's for sure. Uh, but that's okay, because we should be able to deal with these guys without too much of a hassle now. They're going to bleed us a little bit. That's kind of unavoidable. It's a lot of bleed, though, God. We really need to get some healing then. Okay, that's we're fine actually. Uh, oh, these are neutrals actually. Oh no, that's not good. Hmm. Let's Sangre to Sancho one of these, maybe? Just so we can get some sanity, a little bit of healing potentially. I think, you know, Sangre to Sancho healing based on damage dealt. Yeah, that's good. Heal up the bleed a little bit. And our skill two should hopefully go through. But I guess it is still probably roughly a neutral. Our Sandy's like a little bit of it, only by like four points in the- Oh, that's a stagger. Never mind. We're fine on that front then. We'll heal up a bunch. Oh, we're Sangre to Sancho again. I didn't think that through. Ah, hate Commemorative Coin. I love Commemorative Coin actually, but in solos and stuff, it tends to be more of a nuisance than anything. That's fine, you'll heal up a bunch of damage. Your SP is doing worse overall now, but uh... You are able to out-heal the bleed. Pretty much to the fully. You're not at a bleed count though, so that's a little unfortunate, but that's alright. You two just. Oh, this just died to Scarlet Moths. Sure, I'll take it. We need some sanity now though. Really do. I mean, I guess I'll take Rust and Muzzle because Stone Tomb does physically nothing. Perversion! More resources, cool. Um, can we pass this with anyone? 50-50? I like gambling. Darn. No NDA. That's fine, NDA is very bad in solos because chances are you're getting hit a fair bit. Unless you're an evade tank, but even then evade tanks get hit a lot in normal encounters simply because evasion is bad. This is a little rough. I might corrode here. I think it's worth it because I'd really like these guys dead as much as possible. 
We're gonna double up with lifetime suits, I know that, but we should get some staggering. So that's pretty good. We are fine spending a lot of lust resources because we've got a lot of them. Yeah, nice stagger is cool. And it looks like, okay, we're gonna stagger those two both here. So they're all gonna be staggered. So we may be corroded next turn, but it should be perfectly fine because none of them can attack us, so we don't need to worry about the bad resistances. Cool. And we'll be at zero sanity next fight, which is an improvement to like the negative 10 we were beforehand. I guess. Shh. Yeah, I just don't really want to risk the bleed. I know it probably would have been fine. Maybe. I guess it depends. If we could heal enough. We'd probably need Ego at some point during that fight, though. So might as well just bite the bullet, corrode, that sort of thing. Alright, and we're at neutral Sandy for this fight, though. So that's a little iffy. Oh, right. I always forget you exist. This isn't good. This is... Okay, this is actually a pretty bad fight. Huh. You're gonna inflict... You're gonna be inflicting a lot of burn. And I mean a lot. Oh, boy. This is gonna trigger commemorative coin. That's not good. We're not even guaranteed to win this clash. That's really not good. Fluid Sack is better for damage, and we do win the Clash, but this is much worse for Sanity, and it's going to go twice, and that sort of stuff. I don't know how well this fight's going to go, yeah. We've got good healing and stuff, so we might be able to counterbalance the burn. If we take too much burn, though, like, we're just going to be in an awful situation. Because, well, we're going to get Stagger. Okay. That's a decent Corrosion thingy. We might be able to break the wings. How much damage are we dealing? Don't think we broke the wings. Yeah, it's fine. You're doing some damage, getting some burn stacking. Yeah. Yeah, we did not break the wings. Okay. A little bit of burn, not too bad yet, though. You know what is too bad yet, though? It's our sanity is really not looking great. I think we just accept the corrosions. Stupid as an idea that may be. Yeah. I think that is the best play. We're spending a lot of resources and we're corroding a lot, but like, we've kind of caused this upon ourselves by... Oh, we didn't actually corrode that one. Well, that's fine. Makes enough sense. It's still some damage. Kind of would have much preferred Fluid Sack to go twice, but, you know. Too bad. We actually should have clashed against the body, shouldn't we? Because we were going to stag break the wings here, right? Probably. Let's play Ukrode next turn. Should probably be fine. Hopefully Ukrode into Fluid Sack. That's the most recently used ego, but impending or not impending day. Lifetime Stoop was the one that triggered it, so I'm not. I'm still not fully certain on those types of rules, right? Okay. You do crowd into this though. You are Utter Blossom starring, but it shouldn't matter because I think we should just be able to kill you. Okay. Alright, gonna target that. Cool. This should work, I think. Because we're hitting you with just stupid gloom attacks. We'll be brought down to zero sandy, and we'll just heal up the full sandy at the shop on the next floor. Yeah, we're fine. Cool. How are our resources looking? I think we were, are we doing bad on what envy? I think it is most likely because we can't build envy yourself, but fluid sack does require it. Um, I guess we'll. This one probably has the best mounting trial. Yeah, we'll roll with it. Why not? I guess that one isn't too bad. I don't like taking more damage. Give me your enemy ego gift. Fiery down. Cool. What are we feeling? I like the idea of going for this one just because it's sure. Why not? Let's go Envy. 
Sounds fun. Maybe. But yeah, Dawn's in neutral sandy now, so we are going to get you to max sanity. Also heal you up. You'd probably be fine without it since you know your lantern, but just in case you get a bad speed roll or something, I guess. Okay. Now we're mainly just looking for Dawn skill change. We don't, we don't, I, I, it's funny, but we really don't need it. I was genuinely considering it for a bit there. Showing up again, alright. Is it favored on this floor? Surely not, it's the Envy floor. Oh, there's Dawn skill change, excellent. We get another skill three. We'll, um, grab cigarette holder as well, because I guess it does help us out. I press on. What's the normal enemies on this floor? Like, there's some slash weak envy enemies. What does that entail, I wonder? I don't know. Any Sin Affinity floor is also likely to just have people that don't even focus on Sin Affinity at all. That's kind of just how it goes. That's Are Centipede, so... Up? That's fine. Centipede should be simple enough, maybe. We'll probably rupture it a bunch. Yeah, it's you guys. Makes sense, mariachis. Slash weak, use envy. Yeah. That's fitting. It's probably gonna be this fight and then this fight again immediately after. You know, wild guess, I know. But these guys have a lot of pierce, so we're doing pretty fine. They've got some slash too, which isn't too bad. I don't think they've got blunt. I know Ida's exclusively blunt, and I'm pretty sure the minions don't have any blunt at all. They're mostly pierce and some slash. So that works out pretty well for us. Double up whirlwind nom nom noms. If we're lucky, we'll be able to trigger the additional coin conditional for this skill a single time. But I wouldn't bet on it, because that would require me to get staggered. Which is a probability, or it's a possibility I'd like to avoid if possible, right? Because that's an easy way to potentially explode. That you can't heal when you're staggered. I guess painkillers heals you a little bit when you get staggered, but you know what I mean. Well, that guy's might just explode. Nice, we love Scarlet Moths. I really miss, like, day one Scarlet Moths, because, like, for the first few weeks, the Scarlet Moth damage would carry over between fights, so you could just start each fight with, like, a big burst of damage if you if the Scarlet Moths was, like, still saved from the previous fight. And that was cool. It was very much unintentional. I think I could- I had a feeling basically the entire time that that was unintentional, but I still like playing around it. I don't know, how how soon was that patched out? I feel like first Daily Mirror Dungeon might have been after it patched out. I don't know how many weeks it lasted, so I don't think I ever made use of it in that series. But you know, that first month of Limbus when I'd do a lot of Mirror Dungeon grinding on my own, back when the Battle Pass was insufferable to get any levels on it whatsoever. Those were the times. Um... Yeah. God. 3 XP per Mirror Dungeon run. Sure, it was Mirror Dungeon 1, so it was only, you know, 3 floors. It was relatively short compared to some of the stuff we've got now. But you also had to, like, do your entire team building, all the leveling stuff every time. I still do a whole nostalgia for it. That's for sure. One of these, like, years for, like, Limbus Anniversary, they should bring back Mirror Dungeon 1 for a limited time, just so we can go back and see how bad it was. I say that. It, it was good. I don't think it's actually bad. I think it was pretty cool. But, uh... Okay, that's unfortunate. I thought it was pretty cool, but... In the sense where, uh... I think every Mirror Dungeon since has been a big improvement in most steps. I think Mirror Dungeon 2 was definitely a little too long. The 4 floor normal is kind of a good middle ground. I think 5 floors is a little too much some of the times. Although I did... Ooh. I did enjoy this short period of time where Mirror Dungeon 4 normal was 5 floors. I thought that was nice, but at the same time, it was kind of... I definitely would not think it was nice after a few months of daily Mirror Dungeon, right? You're not that... Okay, there you go. That fairy gentleman just messing up my sanity. Or fairy long legs, not gentleman. Sorry for, you know... Insulting your good name, fairy gentleman, sir. 
I feel like I say it a lot when using Lantern Dawn and just aggro and just tank units in general. But like, why does aggro do nothing in normal fights? There's no good reason why it shouldn't at least affect things in normal fights because there are still times where there's one set attacks in normal fights. Sure, it's not as common, but it happens sometimes. And there's so many effects that like require aggro to trigger. Like Dawn's passive physically does not work unless it's a focus encounter because it requires her to have aggro. One of those things that, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get over. We are also skill 3-ing a 3 HP enemy. Unless your skill 1 kills that guy, which it didn't, darn. I can dream. Yeah, our skill 1 skill 2 aren't doing too much because these guys resist slash, but we are stacking the rupture, so we're pretty fine either way. But yeah, there we go, let's go. We get some healing anyways, things to Grey Coat, but... Kind of a waste of a good skill 3. Yeah, it's a little bit of defense level down. <laughs> Alright. A little bit mean. Eh, I'm fine with that. I was gonna, like, save the skill 3 and not do it on the 9 HP enemy, but then I figured, like, I shall nibble that you might kill that guy, right? With the reuse, but it didn't, darn. It's still not that big of a deal. After this turn, these guys are gonna be fairly dead. So, we shouldn't have to take any more one side attacks after this turn, which is good. The defense level down, and this is a little silly. We're taking a little bit more damage. 15 defense level down roughly translates to, like, what? 45% more damage taken? Probably a little less than that if I had to guess because of the weird scaling stuff, but it's roughly in that ballpark. Or 45% more damage taken, sorry. Little misspeak. But either way, you know, I think you figured out what I meant by that. Um, it's within the ballpark. Um, sorry, I blinked for a second there. We'll try passing this. I had a feeling, yeah. And if you fail this one, everyone loses sanity and HP. That's rude. We're gonna heal up Dawn here, simply because, uh... I'd rather her not be at mid below max sanity, especially since we can't clash at all first turn for this fight. I don't really care for any you gifts. I think I really just wanted Dawn skill change. Let's sell some stuff then. We don't need like stuff like Child within a Flask, Tomorrow's Fortune, any Intellect. Or the odds we get staggered. Fairly likely, honestly, yeah. Don't think it's a smart gamble. <laughs> Sure, roll with that for now. Let's spam refreshes. Until we see Don Quixote. Going with the friction. Interesting. There we go. Cool. Grab another skill three. Uh. Press on. Any Yugas we wanted to upgrade? We can get Thunder Ranch upgraded again. Riveting. So now your skill three is even more rupture count infliction. Because <laughs> why not, right? It's funny. And time to kill Centipede. Yeah, got a couple of these. Well, that's funny. As per usual, we're just gonna go all in on the body. We should be able to get some funny rupture going here at least, so that's cool. Not too much as of yet, but that'll change in time. Oh, you wanna get hit by that, do uh, Yeah. Don't really want to use any super strong egos though, so we'll roll with that. You're gonna get to max self charge. There's not anything I can do about it, I think, so yeah. That's fine. I've accepted it. I've, you know, accepted the pain. Sangra de Sancho, I guess, is actually bad for rupture, huh? That's unfortunate, yeah. Our skill 3 is only is only barely rupture positive, so we're actually going to run out of rupture next time we attack you. Because I'm pretty sure none of our rupture is, you know, before attack or on clash win or anything like that, so... 
Oh, and we're also doubling up, so yeah, there goes all the rupture. That's fine. We shouldn't need to ego again this fight, probably. I guess we'll see. Probably should have just sold Kamara. I, I only kept it because I, I knew it could be beneficial for a skill one, but I really should have just sold it. More sanity loss than we need. We did almost dagger the body there, so it's kind of unfortunate we didn't, but that's okay. We get some paralysis here. Oh no, that was same turn paralysis. Never mind. We don't get any paralysis here. Uh, let's try a little bit of this. Sure. We do flashing lure first because this is decent rupture setup y type shenanigans. Because we trigger that. Cool. You're looking pretty good on rupture now. Okay. And we do just do straight up. You are weak to gloom, so yeah, we're doing a lot of damage. And you do die here, yeah. Huh. Assuming we win both clashes, which we will, without doubt. They may be favorites, but I have full faith in Don Quixote. Yep, so you're at like two now. You lost two, so now you're at two. We win this clash, and you die instantly. Cool. A victory. Kind of underwhelming final fight, but uh, we did do a lot of rupturing, so that's pretty funny. We lantern dawned all over. Yeah, lantern dawn's a pretty solid. I guess in this mirror dawn in general, normal especially, any unit that's like at least like slightly decent at tanking can solo as long as you choose the right floors. Just keep in mind what their resistances are, you know. I avoided blunt heavy floors and bleed heavy floors since, you know, Dawn's weak to blunt and she didn't have any way to counterbalance bleed damage. Or she kind of does, but not a convenient one. Like something like Sun Glyph or DHE Rhodium would have. And yeah, Baba Yaga floor is also a good friend because your main goal is to get through a super easy first floor because you need the second floor shop to get an EO gift that really sets does well for you or something like that right lethograph is kind of also your best friend i didn't get it there but i don't really need it because dawn's kind of got enough healing on her own right gray coat helps a lot though in folks encounters her passive helps a lot though but yeah i just felt like doing a dawn solo once again this video is pre-recorded so i can't do daily polls but anyways that'll be all for this time thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!